Good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Cooper, known as the Channel Guy Trader, and I'm reporting to you live from Wall Street Trading's Miami office down in sunny South Florida. Today's date is Monday, August the 5th, 2013, and here is today's After the Bell Market Summary video brought to you by WallStreetTrading.com. Just a reminder, if you have not been to the website yet, go check it out. It's a lot of free education information on the site, and you can also find out details on our Active Traders course that we're now offering via webinar or via at our Miami office or our New York office. So, so check that out. A lot of great stuff going on. Aside from that, let's go and take a look at the markets here. The Dow was down 46 today. The Nasdaq was down. I'm sorry, the Nasdaq was actually up a little over three and a quarter, and the S&P 500 was down two and a half points. And take a look at the breadth on the market today. We had 2,930 issues advancing on the NYSE, Nasdaq, and the Amex. We had 3,207 issues declining on the NYSE, Nasdaq, and the Amex. Therefore, breadth was in favor of the bears just to give you guys a quick note of today's action before we take a look at the charts in different sectors take a look at the volume we had today on the markets on well, on the S&P in the S&P 500 I drew this black line right there and what I'm going to do I'm going to drag it I'm going to drag the screen across you can see today is actually the lowest volume day that we had for a while I would say since back here in uh, looks like this day was pretty close right here that was back in October. That was back in December. What day was that? That was December the 24th. We had 53,874. Today we had 53,861. So that the volume today was actually lower than that day. And yeah, so it looks like this was the lowest volume we have had for like the past year. All right, on the summer Monday here. And things were pretty slow today. You did have some movers and shakers out there. You had Tesla, SPEX, SPEE, SPEX, excuse me, and Apple was up today. But aside from that, today was very, very slow. And um, you know, you just have to keep on watching this action and see which way they want to take this market. If we're going to pull back in a bit or consolidate and try to hold above this 170 level. So let's go ahead and break down the chart, starting off with the SPY, the S&P 500 ETF here. You can see we closed down 25 cents. All right, and we closed at 170.70. As long as we can continue to hold above this 170 level, that would be pretty good. You can see we're starting to form a range now between 170 and 171, as we have these rising moving averages here. If we break below 170, look for a gap fill action from last Wednesday's, uh, last Thursday's gap up, that which is down here around 169. If we were to break below uh, this 170 area, aside from that, look for some more consolidation above these levels, and then look for them to try to push this market to higher as the trend is up. Right, if you take a look at the ES action, which is what we track in our uh, MyWallStreetTV.com live intraday chat room, same thing here. Volume's pretty low. <coughs> we're holding above. <coughs> we're holding above a uh, 16.95 half. Still working off this big expansion candle that we had on Thursday, and um, again, you know, some more consolidation is probably going to be needed up here before we try to make a push higher. And just keep that one on watch. If you take a look at the triple Q's, the Nasdaq 100 ETF. All right, you can see the triple Q's. Same thing, low volume today. Uh, they continue to make a move higher. Closed at $77.02. Pretty flat day in the Nasdaq. Not much action going on there. And hold on one second. My screen's frozen up for a second here. All right. Uh, let's hear. All right, so... Again, rising above these move, rising above these moving averages right here. Pretty flat day. It was only up five cents. Again, slow day. And uh, as long as we continue to hold these moving averages, you want to just stick with the trend until we get a big uh, directional move, maybe like a, a a fast move up, and you can sell sell some into some nice wide range candles. Or if we pull back in, look to buy some dips. Aside from that, there's really nothing to do here. I mean, just stay long or stay buying some equities on dips in the Nasdaq. We take a look at let me take a look at the actually let me take a look at the proprietary channel analysis on the Nasdaq system here that I've been using channel system. You can see we're above this little red area, so as long as we stay above this key trend line, I'm assuming we're going to start we're going to continue to float up here on the Nasdaq. So that looks pretty good there. All right, let's take a look at the IWM. The IWM made new all-time highs again today, showed relative strength in other indices. IWM closed at one. Hit a high of 105.63, closed at 105.52. One key trend line that I'm watching on the IWM is the trend line from this little high to this high to this high. 
that's going to take us around 106. If we could break above 106 and hold above 106, that would be very bullish on the IWM. We should be looking for another power move up. If we have trouble breaking above this trend line, look for this to possibly try to roll right back over and try to get some back and fill back down towards 103. All right, matter of fact, this could po possibly be a uh, left shoulder. You got your neckline down here around 103. Left shoulder can form the head right here and then start trying to form a head and shoulders pattern. Again, that's getting a little bit too ahead. But again, I'm just looking at a possible scenario that could be shaping up, which, you know, within the next two weeks, we'll find out if that's going to be a scenario or not within the next week and a half or so. But again, aside from that, IWM still continues to show that nice uh, relative strength in the uh, broad markets as far as indices goes. Um, tomorrow, we have any key news out tomorrow. We have the Red Book tomorrow, international trade. Uh, not anything crazy going on uh, tomorrow as far as news goes. All right. Um, let's see here. What else we got going on here? So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple stocks. All right. Starting off with uh, Apple Computers. Apple making a nice move up today, up 1.5%. Ever since it's been able to hold above that key 420 level that we've been tracking from back here, from back here to the breakdown to when it got back above it, to when it broke below it, to when it got back above it, to when it held and gapped up from the earnings. Ever since it's been able to hold above that 420, Apple's been a buy. And then for the simple fact that it gapped up and held the earnings gap up, that thing's just been on a on a tear, and it's been making a nice move up. It's going to be coming into some resistance though around this 480 area. So keep a non apple to around that 480 area. It's also going to have some resistance right here around the uh, 470 level. So keep an eye on that. All right, Amazon, another stock that's showed some nice strength on the earnings report, but it's been pulling back and having some trouble lately. Not sure why, but it's still holding a nice little range here at the bottom of the range. You have the range down here around one second. Wait for it. Right here around uh, 298. Top of the range around 311. If we can continue to hold this bottom range down here around 298, we should be looking for a push back up. Use this little trend line right here as a gauge and then see and then see what happens. All right. Uh, let's see what else we have going on here. Again, there wasn't many stocks on the move. Oh, can't leave this video without talking about Tesla. Tesla continues to rip the shorts if they're shorting this stock. I mean, the momentum's in the, in the name. They have earnings coming out on the 7th, which is let's see, which is Wednesday, and uh, the stock could who knows the stock could maybe do a crazy gap up and continue to show this power momentum that's been getting in the name here. Uh, the Solars were in play today because CSIQ had a nice little contract that was made. So they're going to be getting some nice revenue in. So you can take a look at FSLR, which was one of the trades that we called out this morning. It made some nice uh, coin on. FSLR hanging in there. They have earnings coming out tomorrow. Keep an eye on FSLR. If it breaks above 450 and holds, that looks pretty good. If it starts holding below 46, that would not be good. As you can see, it's just pretty much trading in a range between 46 and 50. So a little $4 range there on FSLR. Some of the other solar stocks are in place. CSIQ. All right, this one looks pretty good. looks good to go higher. They have earnings coming out on the 14th before the market opens. You can also take a look at TSL, Tesla. I'm sorry, not Tesla. Um, Trina Solar holding above 711 looks pretty good. You can see this is a little resistance zone. And now that it's holding on top of that resistance zone, it's a support zone now. And it's trading in the range between 711 and, and 775 or 7, 780. They could break out. Look for it to try to come back towards these highs up here around 850 from this day that it had uh, this little crazy move up. But so far, that's looking uh, pretty good as well. Then you have a couple other ones out there you can take a look at WFR, um, SPWR, and uh, some other names. But those are the better looking ones out there. And SCTY, which I believe is uh, Solar City. Yeah, this one looks pretty good too. Take a look at Solar City. Actually, this one's going to be on watch for tomorrow. I'm actually going to put an alert on it right now because it looks like it wants to move up a lot. Possibly back up towards those highs. You see a nice little cup and handle pattern here as well. It's your little cup. That's your little handle. And uh, over today's highs, this thing can get going, guys. Back up towards the highs around 52. Uh, what else? As far as looking across the board here at the heat map, I really don't see any crazy sector that was showing some strength today. I saw some. I see some strength in the uh, healthcare stocks. All right, UNH. Uh, w UNH looks good. WLP looks good. Uh, that looks pretty good. Humana. All right. Again, I'm not, and I'm not sure if any news came out of the sector, but they are showing up on the heat map as I'm looking across the broad different sectors to see what stocks are moving and shaking here on the slow day. The financials started off pretty well in the morning. All right. They sold off a little bit, then they started recovering, and then they uh, pulled.
pull it back a little bit off the highs. All right, real quick here. I see this little power stock coming up on the screen. MJN, Med Johnson Nutrition. Stock usually trades uh, pretty interesting entry, on an intraday basis with momentum in it. So keep an eye on this one if it takes out yesterday's highs or today's highs. I mean, sorry, around 78.80. Let's take a look at a couple of the financial stocks. All right, Goldman Sachs made a new high, pulled back in a bit after gapping down slightly. Slightly still looks pretty good. Name looks to go higher. Uh, Bank of America, kind of slow, but just forming a range between 15 and uh, 1450 or so. Keep an eye on this name; it looks pretty good. Again, I don't. Again, we're probably going to consolidate up here on the uh, at these highs in the market, but these strong sectors that have been holding up, you definitely want to keep them on your radar. Wells Fargo trading in the range between 4475 and 43, and of course you have J.P. Morgan, which. Uh, Closed down 39 cents today, trading in a range, I would say, between 55 and this 57 area. So, some a little shake and bake action up here. Small range candles, no really uh, big expansion candles. They just need to consolidate a little bit more before they try to make a push higher, it looks like. Uh, what other action we had going on today? Some action in some of these natural gas stocks. CHK above 23 has been a mover. If you guys paid attention to our last video that we did, I talked about this in one of the videos last week. On CHK over 23, and this one's been on a tear. Keep this one on your radar; it looks to go much higher. If you're looking at CHK, you want to make sure you look at some of the other natural gas and energy stocks, such as SWN, which is not doing anything. Some other natural gas, natural resource stocks, COG, which looks pretty good. COG had a, a good earnings report. It's holding its earnings gap just the same way Apple did, and, and it's trading sideways. And I just say just the way that Apple did because any stock that has earnings report and holds its gap. That means it's, it's pretty good. There could be a nice little bid in it for it to move higher. So you had a nice little up move, a little pullback. Earnings came out. It gapped up, held in the gap, and now it's trading sideways to higher, forming these little minor higher uh, pivot lows. So keep the COG on your radar. Let me take a look at this RRC, another natural gas stock I like to take a look at when I'm looking at the whole sector. And RRC looks pretty good, too, over this whole number of 82. I right, could go back up towards this high that it had about a week and a half ago on this little crazy day, this little crazy action. Um... That's about it, guys. Some energy out there in the biotechs, Tesla, solars. Aside from that, quiet day. Hope you guys had a great day. If you have not been to the website, again, check it out, wallstreettrading.com. If you're interested in taking our education course, you can contact me at ccooper at wallstreettrading.com. Uh, we're going to be doing it on a monthly basis down here at our Miami office. We're actually hosting a course this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. If you can still make it, shoot me an email. We'll try to get you in the class. And uh, aside from that, guys, a lot of great stuff going on. You want to participate? Uh, go to the website. You can find out more details. Have a great day. Cheers.